Many years ago, about four years ago, I sat under the ministry of Bishop Dag Hewitt Mills in Manila. Uh, my good friend, Pastor David Summerall, had invited this servant of the Lord to come and minister. And he said, I've never sat under his ministry before. And my heart was challenged and moved. And my heart cried out that God would send him our way. Not only for our fellowship, but for the city of Rockhampton. The people would, from his anointed servant, begin to hear the power of God's grace and love and the ability to change and set people free. And so he's here with us tonight. I want you to know that I read his books. This is a beauty. How to be born again and to avoid hell. And it just moves my heart. It gave me a fresh passion to want to see people saved. I think I do have that passion. But there's a, came an awakening within my heart and in a greater measure. And I thank God for his servant. I thank God for my friend, Pastor David Summerall. He's here somewhere in the sanctuary. Where is he? Give him a big God. There he is. He's over there. Give him a big God bless you. Hallelujah. If you're, if you're ever traveling around the world, you've got to go to Manila and stop and visit that church on a weekend. It really is something special. And uh, so we're so glad that my connection with him brought me into relationship with Bishop. And so with any more to say, would you all please stand and would you welcome the servant of the Lord to the platform tonight? Hallelujah. All right. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your word, which changes our lives. Thank you for Jesus, who died for us. Thank you that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you for tonight, that our lives will never be the same. Thank you, you are touching us, you are healing us, you are blessing us, and you are helping us to do what's right and to serve you well. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Once again, I want to say thank you to Pastor Claude and his dear wife for inviting me to be here with you in Rockhampton. I'd never heard of Rockhampton till I met your pastor. <laughs> and I'm glad that I'm here. It's an honor for my wife and I to be here and I see so many of my people here. <laughs> They've come from Sydney, from Melbourne, New Zealand, all right, as well. Okay. <laughs> and many other places. What a blessing. I thank Pastor David Samral for the relationship. I've known him for many years through the Church Growth Conference in Korea. And I remember... I went up to him one day and asked him, please pray for me so that I would have a big church. Yeah. He said, don't worry about the big church. You have a big church. Just love God. <laughs> what a blessing. So, it's, a, it's an honor to be here in Australia. And... Um, Tonight, I'm preaching about Jesus, Jesus, the Savior. My wife is also here. Would you please give us a wave? Thank you. Um, we've been married for 30 years. So, and I knew her in school, university, for five, five years before that. So, it's 35 years of knowing her. And it's been a blessing. Amen. 
Jesus Christ, my topic tonight is Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. I'm sure you all know that. Hebrews 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Wow. So, that's my topic. My topic is the verse. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is the same. Jesus Christ is the same. What does it mean when you say somebody is the same? When someone is the same, he looks the same all the time. I once visited an old man, and he told me, I used to be very handsome <laughs> when I was younger. <laughs> and he told me, now that I'm older, my whole face has changed. And even little children run away from me. <laughs> so he was, he was explaining to me that it's not easy to be old. It's not that easy. And then I thought of Jesus. Jesus never changes. Jesus Christ is the same. If you see Jesus today, he will look the same. Amen. Amen. He will look just like how the Bible describes him. In Revelations chapter 1, it said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a voice. In verse 12, it says, I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Now, some of us have wanted to see Jesus. All my life, I wanted to see Jesus. I still am waiting. When I see him, you'll hear about it. <laughs> Sometimes I can pray for a long time and open my eyes suddenly, hoping that Jesus will be in the room Still, he hasn't appeared. So I'm left with this Bible to read to see what he looks like. And he says, I saw one clothed with a garment down to the foot and get about the paps with a golden girdle. All right? Jesus doesn't wear leather belt. He wears a golden one. And his head and his hairs were white like wool. So Jesus' hair is not brown, it's not black, it's white. All right? Hey. <laughs> and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Pastor Claude said, my eyes look like fire in the, in the light. So you can look closely. <laughs> it's like Jesus' eyes. Wow. So if you ever see Jesus, you will find his eyes piercing, eyes of fire, eyes of deep love. Hallelujah. And his feet like unto brass, as it were, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice, his voice was like the sound of many waters. You know, if you ever hear from the Lord, you will always remember that he spoke to you. I remember many times when the Lord spoke to me. If he did speak to you, you'll remember him and you'll remember his voice because his voice is unique. Before we came in, Pastor Claude was sharing with me four principles that the Lord spoke to him. Four principles the Lord gave him when he was sick and that healed him and brought him out and have kept him up till today that he's 76 years old year, years young yes <laughs> you never forget when God speaks so when he was, when he was telling me these principles I, I could also hear the spirit and I decided to write them down because you can hear God. 
speaking. So when you hear the voice of God, you remember, you always remember. The Bible says his voice was like the sound of many waters. I remember when God called me to the ministry and his power came on me, one in a room in 1988, and he said, from today, you can teach. And I never forget it. I remember, because his voice is a very special voice. And he had in his hand seven stars. And out of his hand went a sharp two-edged sword. So Jesus has a sword. Oh, it's fine. Had a two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. So when you see Jesus, his face is shining. All right? So those of us who have never seen Jesus in a vision, this is what we have. And I saw, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We are serving a living God. We serve a Jesus who is alive. One of the things that attracted me to Kenneth Hagin's ministry was uh, when when I heard him speaking about the visions he had of Jesus. You know, it, it was riveting. It was, it, it, it stirred me up Because he described how Jesus, and you can read it in his book, I Believe in Visions. He described how Jesus walked into uh, a hospital room where he was on admission. And he was sitting, he was sitting up in bed. He had had an operation the day before. And he thought it was the nurse coming in. And this person came in and he said it was Jesus. As soon as he saw him, he recognized that it was Jesus. And he went around the bed and sat by him and spoke to him for two hours. Yeah. How many would like Jesus to come to your room and speak to you for two hours? Wow. And, and Jesus told him why he had had the accident. The accident was, he said that he was on a stage like this. And the stage was made of wood like this, I think. And it was polished. So something happened and he slipped and he fell with his elbow on a machine, a little tape recorder that was by the pulpit. In those days, they recorded messages with this little machine on on the stage. So he fell on it and he dislocated or actually dislocated and broke the elbow joint. So he was taken to the hospital and the doctor told him this is quite a serious thing. So he had a surgery or whatever. And then the next day, the Lord walked into the room and the Lord told him that he should be glad that he allowed the devil, because he said it was the devil who attacked him. And he should be glad I allowed the devil to do what he did. And he said, I did that to get your attention. And he told him, he said, you are not doing my, my work the way I wanted you to. He said, you were neglecting your ministry as a prophet. And because you like teaching, you're always just teaching. But I called you to be a prophet and a teacher. And not just a teacher. But because you enjoyed the teaching, and people liked the teaching, you just taught all the time. And he said, you remember, (laughs) he said, you remember a, a meeting you had some weeks ago And he said he was talking with some people and he said, you know, God called me to be a a teacher and a prophet. And he said, he was there. You know, the Lord is here. So he he was making reference to a meeting that he had. And he said, you remember you said you were a teacher and a prophet. And he said, in the Bible, a prophet always comes before a teacher. Yeah, there's an order. First apostles, then prophets, then teachers. So he said you, had, you changed the order at, at that meeting. You said it. 
It's from, it was in your heart. You know? So the Lord told him how he was going to be healed and he was going to be discharged and spoke to him about his ministry. So, I mean, since I read those stories and many other visions, you know, I said, Lord, I want to see you. Hey! I really want Jesus to come to me and sit down with me and talk to me. You know? And he told him, he said, if you hadn't changed, if I, if I, wasn't, if I didn't arrest you and arrest your attention, you wouldn't live beyond the age of 55. He actually gave him his age when he would die. And said, so you would not have lived beyond the age of 55. So, seeing Jesus is important, and listening to the words of Jesus, very important. Amen. Amen. <laughs> when I read that, I was really scared. 55. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, I'm glad I'm past 55 now. <laughs> I was always thinking, 55, Lord, 55-ish. <laughs> anyway, so Jesus Christ is the same. He is alive. It's the only religion without a dead founder. Yes. Amen. It's the only religion without a dead founder. We have no grave of Jesus Christ to go and inspect and to pray at. He's alive. Hallelujah. Amen. He is alive. Amen. Now, so when you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, number one, you look the same. Yeah. I have had the, you know, I don't know if you call it a privilege of exhuming a dead body before for some reason. And I tell you, <laughs> you need to have a strong heart. Yes. You know, I, I was once in South Africa and I asked someone, it was a funeral, and I asked the caretaker of the cemetery, you know, have you ever exhumed a body? He said, yes. He said, after 40 years, you only have hair and nails. Left. There's nothing left. You vanish. Disappear. Yeah. Now, Jesus Christ is not hair and nails. He's real. Amen. He's alive. Amen. Yes. He's real. He's alive. And he's here today. Amen. I said he's here. He's, he's, he's watching me preaching. I said he's watching me preaching. Amen. Amen. One day I was in South Africa in Devon, and there was a lady, a white lady, who came up to me after I finished preaching. She said, young man, come here. And I came, because when an elderly lady says, come, you better obey. So I, I came and I sat down. She said, sit down, sit down here. I sat down. She said, did you know that when you were preaching, Jesus was walking behind you, up and down? I said, no. She, said, she told me, I see, she was about 80 years old. She said, I see visions clearly in three dimensions. Yeah. She said, all the time we were preaching, he was walking up and down. And she said, it's very rare. Yeah. Many times, people have seen Jesus around me, although I haven't seen him. <laughs> I'm the one praying for it, and others are getting the answer. <laughs> it's amazing. The way God works. I just have to listen to their stories and believe. Now, when you are the same, you say the same things when you are the same. And you do the same things. You know, I was in university. My roommate was also a medical student, and I was a medical student. Today, my roommate lives from the university, lives in America. I, hadn't see, I haven't seen him for years. I hadn't seen him for years. And once I called him. And as we were talking and laughing on the phone, he said, Doug, you are the same. You are the same as you were in school. I said, what do you mean I'm the same? He said, you talk in the same way. <laughs> you laugh in the same way. And you actually behave in the same way. You're doing the same things. Because when I was in school, 
I was doing certain things. I was preaching. I was having programs. You know, even though I was a student, I was preaching. I was going on outreach. I was doing this. I was doing church things. And I was, I'm still doing church things. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he said, you talk in the same way. You know, the way you talk on the phone. You're the same. Even though you've become a big ministry and all that. So Jesus Christ is the same. That means that he is saying the same things. Because if he's the same, he would talk in the same way. And so we must be careful because Jesus has not changed what he's saying. He has not. He's saying exactly, if you want Jesus to speak, if I could give him a mic, Lord, and he was to say something, he would say exactly what he said 2,000 years ago. Yes. So what did he say? What are the things that Jesus said? Amen. What are the things that he did that he is still doing? He's doing the same things. He's healing people. Amen. Amen. He is healing people. He's healing the blind. Jesus healed the blind. We all know Jesus healed the blind. And today, 2,000 years later, we still need Jesus the healer. Amen. Yes. We still need healing from our sicknesses and our diseases. Hallelujah. And Jesus is still healing people. Yes. When I, when I have a crusade, I pray for the sick. And I tell them in different towns, I said, I cannot heal. If I could heal, if I could heal personally, I would go to the hospital and discharge every single person from the hospital. I said, I discharge you in the name of Jesus. You are healed. And I'll cure everybody and walk them out of the hospital. Hey, the doctors would be angry with me. But I cannot heal. I can only pray for people to be healed. But I know somebody who can heal. Yeah. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Jesus is alive. Yes. We, we, we are nothing. We can only pray and Jesus will heal and touch people. So whenever people come and whenever people come around and they are healed, you know, you ask yourself, how did, you, how did you get healed? I don't know how they got healed. I just know that Jesus is a healing Jesus. And I know that the problems that people had 2,000 years ago, we still have. Amazing. You know Stevie Wonder? You know Stevie? I just call to say I love you. Yeah. Once he, he visited us, in, he came to my office and came to our church, you know, and... Um, I was just amazed as I was sitting with this man, famous person. And, you know, I, he, he assesses you by, I don't know, I think when you are blind, you can hear. You can, you can sense what's, what's in the room, but you can't see. You know, and I was, you know, I asked him, how, how did you get blind? You know, and he said, he told me from birth. You know, and as, as I looked at this man, a millionaire, from Los Angeles. And I was thinking, 2,000 years have gone by. You know, and the problem that Jesus healed, blind Bartimaeus, blind from birth, still today, the power of Jesus is relevant. What man couldn't do, still cannot do. We can go to the moon, we can go to Mars, we can go to Jupiter, but you can't heal the blind. But Jesus healed the blind. And he's still healing the blind. Hallelujah. He healed mad people. He's a healing Jesus. Yes. He healed the mentally ill. And up till today, it's not easy to, to cure a mad person. I'm a doctor. You know, in, even in the village, they have a saying that when a mad person is healed, you know, there's always a little bit left. <laughs> there's a little bit left somewhere, you know. And uh, 
But Jesus, when he met the madman of Gadara, that was a pure case of schizophrenia. Pure. Exact diagnosis. Perfect diagnosis. Madman, naked, walking in the street. And Jesus, the, this man ran to Jesus. He ran to Jesus and knelt down and said, have mercy on me. And Jesus spoke to demons. And he asked, how many demons are here? And they said, the legion, which is 6,200. Can you imagine the amount, number of devils that want to stay in one person? And he cast out the devils, and the devil said, we will not go out of this country. That's why you find there are pockets of activity, and every area has particular problems which stay there forever. And that's why you notice if you travel from Sydney to Rockhampton to, to, to Brisbane to different places, you, you see different feelings and different atmospheres. It's called by the presence of different devils that occupy different countries and different places. He said, don't send us out of this country. And Jesus cast out 6,200 devils out of this man into the, and the demons went into the pigs. Now, the pig said, we are not going to stay with devils. We prefer to commit suicide. <laughs> so, they committed suicide that day. They said, we can't stay with devils in us. And they, they just went and drowned themselves. But imagine that kind of demonic power that was in one sick person for so long, destroying him. And Jesus set the man free. And Jesus is today setting people free. Yes. Jesus will set you free. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, Kenneth Hagin, he described a, a meeting. One time he was having a meeting and um, he had a healing line. He was just praying for people. So people were coming by. You know, so a man came in the line and went back to sit down. And when he came, nothing happened. Just prayed and then he went back. Then as he was standing on stage, suddenly he looked in the direction of the man. This man had a mental problem. And suddenly, he didn't know him. He saw his eyes open and he saw a monkey, like a, a demon, like a monkey, that was sitting on the man's shoulder and with his hands around the man's forehead like that. It was like a band. And he saw, he just saw it. And he said to him, come. And he cast out, cast off the devil and the demon fell to the ground. And he walked him out of the church. And the man was set free. And the man who was in the mental asylum, who was having mental illness, was totally healed by the power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, Jesus Christ is the same. Oh, yes. He's still a healing Jesus. And he's healing you today. Whatever problem you have, you can expect that the Jesus who has not changed can and will heal you. And you remember that story I told you about Kenneth Hagin when um, the Lord appeared to him in the hospital. He told him, always pray for the sick. When people are going to the hospital, it will always change the outcome. Even if they're going for hospital medicine, always pray for them. Always pray for people that are in hospital and people that... Uh, seeing the doctor, always pray it will change the outcome. And it changed the outcome of his condition. So today I believe that Jesus is a healing Jesus and he's changing the outcome of your life by his mighty power. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus healed paralyzed people and he's healing paralyzed people today. Amen. 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 I remember at a crusade, a man came with a, a bus a busload of people, 36 people. I said, who are these people? When it was time for testimonies, he came on stage with these 36 people. I said, what, what's happening? They said, this man was healed. He was carried to a crusade some months ago. And he was healed. He was carried there. He was paralyzed. And he was healed. And he went back home. And God touched him. He was walking. So he had come to this next crusade with all these people as a delegation to say thank you. Wow. What an amazing testimony. 
And I know God is going to give you a testimony. In these three days, God is giving you a testimony of his power. Jesus is the same. If you are the same, you are either the same or you are not the same. And when you say someone has changed, you find that he talks differently. Now, Australia has changed quite a bit. Yes. The society has changed. The world has changed. People behave differently. People are not, people are not how they were some years ago. There's more danger. You know, once I was in South Africa and I came to the town where David Livingston came to when he came from Scotland to Africa, you know. And uh, an interesting comment that the tour guide uh, made, he said, in those days, you know, the danger was lions, was animals, because David Livingston was attacked by a lion. He almost died, but he was saved. And th this man said, in those days, the danger was animals, was lions, but today the danger are human beings. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus healed the deaf and the dumb. He healed people's children. So Jesus can heal your child. Do you believe Jesus is a healer of children? Yeah. Jesus can heal your child. You never know what it's like till you have a child and you bring your child to Jesus. Say, Lord, touch my child. Heal my child. Jesus healed many people, brought their children. You know, it's easy to criticize. And you'll criticize till you are sick. And you'll find out that doctors can do only so much. Yes. It's, it's when you're not experienced that you will, you will criticize things. But a time will come when you see that you're not criticizing. You're praying, Lord, touch me too. Heal me. Amen. And Jesus raised the dead. How many believe that Jesus can raise the dead? Wow. Jesus, is, Jesus raised the dead. I mean, when someone dies, doctors just step back. I've been in the hospital many times. We just, the person is dead, you just, it's over. You just wrap up and take, him, take the body away. But not Jesus. Jesus raised the dead three times, recorded in the Bible. First time, you know, uh, Jairus' daughter was dead, and he went and he healed. She just died, and he healed her. A lot of people criticized Jesus for doing that. They said, you know, she wasn't really dead. She wasn't really dead. So, next time, Jesus decided to wait a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Read your Bible. So, he was in the city of Nain, and this time, it had progressed to the funeral. There was a funeral. So as they were on the, in the procession going to the grave, then Jesus was moved with compassion. You see, this time, they, he, she wasn't, the body was not at home. The body was on the way to the, to the grave. And Jesus saw the young man. He was moved with compassion. And he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. And the boy got up and everybody ran away. <laughs> hey! Yeah. <laughs> now, can you believe that People still criticize Jesus, saying that the boy was just unconscious. He was in a coma. So the next time, Jesus decided to wait even longer. And the next time was Lazarus. Ha, ah, you remember the story of Lazarus? Yes, Lazarus was in the grave. He, he was dead, and, and his disciples kept asking him, Are you not going? Your friend is sick. He said, No, don't worry. I want him to die. <laughs> I want him to die properly. I want, I, want, I, want him to, I want him to go deep down in the grave. I want him to decompose. Yes. So he waited for four good days. Now, so if today is Saturday, that means that he died on maybe Monday. And it was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Four days. Either came on Saturday or Friday, depending on how you count. <laughs> And Jesus came and said, where, where is he buried? That Jesus you and I believe in. Where is he buried? I've never seen a pastor do that in all my life. Take me to the cemetery. Take me where? To the cemetery. So they went to the cemetery and he said, dig him out. 
What? Are you crazy? Dig him out. Let's be serious. And they brought the pickaxes and they started digging and they dug down and they pulled the body out of the grave and there was a dead body. And Jesus said, Lazarus! Lazarus! Everybody was watching. Have you seen any pastor, any reverend minister do that in your life? There's nobody like Jesus. I said, there's nobody like Jesus Christ in the whole world. Yes. And his sister said, by now he stinketh. Which means by now the body is decomposing. Yes. And dead Lazarus, dead after four days, rose from the dead in front, in full view of everyone. Everyone was amazed. Now, that is the Jesus that we are serving. That is the Jesus that you and I are serving. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. He is alive. He is the same. He is doing the same things. Amen. And you and I must believe in Jesus. I have had two, one and a half testimonies of people rising from the dead in my ministry. One and a half because one was a person, a living person, and the half was a dead baby in the womb. Yes. Dead, confirmed dead medically and came alive. So that's half, half, <laughs> half a testimony. <laughs> Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. And I remember some years ago, I was in Colombia preaching, Colombia, South America, and there was this dead child who came alive. Hey, the whole town went wild. The next day at the crusade, it was a huge stadium, 70,000 people. And the next day, they brought more dead people for me to raise. (laughs) Hey, I was in trouble. (laughs) <laughs> when I got to the stadium, when I got to the stadium, first of all, I'd never seen as many wheelchairs. About 5,000 wheelchairs. Yeah, people. Then ambulances lined up. And then they put a dead man by the stage for me to raise from the dead. Yeah, so he was lying on a stretcher down there. The, everything was ready for me. <laughs> Jesus is alive. Yeah. Hallelujah. And you know, when you go out preaching the gospel of Jesus, it's exciting. You see many things you never thought you'd see before. I was guarded by uh, four motorcycle riders with machine guns in Colombia. This was about some years ago. And um, when I was leaving, about about 16 of them, the soldiers, came to me and said, we have never seen anything like this before. Pray for us. We want to give our life to Jesus Christ. The miracles for five days, including raising of the dead. Yes, they all humbled themselves and gave their life to Jesus. That was the last prayer I prayed for all of them to be saved before I left Colombia. What a blessing. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Now, Jesus is not only doing the same things. So he looks the same, number one. He's doing the same things. And then number three, and finally, he is saying the same things. So what did he say? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. So Jesus is still the way. Amen. He hasn't changed. He is still the way, the only way. Jesus is the way. If you want to go to heaven, you need to come through Jesus. No one, I I didn't write the Bible. I came to meet the Bible, and I'm quoting the Bible. It says, no one 
comes to the Father but by me. So if you want to go to the Father, you need to come through Jesus. Yes, he's still saying it, and you have to believe it. Jesus Christ is the same. He said, I am the door. I am the way. I am the resurrection and the life. You know, Jesus is the hope we have to live again. Jesus is the resurrection. Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Jesus said, greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friend. You'll never find such love anywhere. The love that Jesus has for you and for me. You'll never find it. No man will ever love you like that. Sorry about that, ladies. But no man will ever love you the way Jesus will love you. Greater love has no man than this love. This is the love. You will never find a greater love. And no woman will ever love you as a man the way Jesus loves you. You'll never find it. In marriage, in friendship, in association, in anything, greater love. And Jesus is still saying the same words to you today. He's saying there's no greater love. You want love, you want acceptance, you want peace, come to Jesus. Jesus is the one with the great love, the big love. That is the love that you need. We all want love. That's why we like weddings. The weddings remind us of love. Even though marriages have so many problems, we still like going to weddings. You get it? It's because weddings speak of love. Love and bliss and happiness. You know? You know, whenever a couple, you know, my, my church members are all young people. When they are going for honeymoon, I always tell them, make sure you tell the hotel people that you are on your honeymoon. Yeah, they will treat you specially. Yeah. And whenever they go, they just, oh, we are on our honeymoon. Ah, honeymoon, who? Oh. Then they start doing extra things. <laughs> because, you see, it's something we like. You get it? We like love and happiness and, oh, this is a couple and they are getting happy. And we sort of know that there is a bit of sadness ahead. <laughs> so, if we can... <laughs> <laughs> so if you can do something to make the couple even happier if you can just please do something for them <laughs> yeah so I tell you Jesus Christ is is, is, is the great love. You know, Jesus said, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Wow. Ah, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ. That means God can have a son. You know, some people, some religions say God cannot have a son. But the Bible says God has a son. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. He had only one son. That whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Everlasting life. Yeah. You know, Jesus really does something for our lives. Perhaps you don't know till you see the absence of Jesus. You know, once I was invited to a funeral of a man who did not believe in God. Hey. And I was asked to speak. And I thought to myself, what am I going to say? And I tell you, it is the most difficult funeral I ever attended because I didn't know what to say. Because all the good things I can say at a funeral are because of Jesus. And these people say they don't believe in God. So I tell you, you know what I did? How many want to know what I did? Are you sure you want to know what I did? I decided to look on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> to know what to say. Because I couldn't look in the Bible. So I had to look in the internet to say what to say at a funeral where they don't believe in God. Hey! <laughs> Google. Google was what there to tell me what to do. 
Yeah. So, you know, when you have Jesus, there's so much hope. We have, we, we, he's the resurrection. We will not perish. When you stand before the grave, there's hope, there's, there's encouragement, there's life. We know we are going, we'll see you again. Yes. There'll be, there'll, we'll, we'll, soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. No more crying there. No more dying there. No more sadness over there. No more sorrow there. We're going to see the king. Yes. You, you, you never know the difference till you, 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 you come to people who don't know Jesus. And you realize that what you have in Christ is so wonderful. It's so precious to have Jesus. Hallelujah. So Jesus is the same. And these words are the same. They are so, they are so powerful. They never change. God so loved the world. Greater love has no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. And so this is the good message that we have for the world today. Yeah, we have the same message. We have no new message. We are not here to talk about investments or how to make your first million dollars or how to be rich. We are here to talk about Jesus, the savior of the world, the healer of this world, the one who loved us with a great love and washed us with his own blood and, and has made us his children and has accepted us into his beloved. And one more thing that is not going to change is his blood. His blood, the blood of Jesus, will never lose its power. The blood has power to wash away your sins and to cleanse you, ha, to forgive you. You are forgiven through the blood of Jesus. Your life is changed through the blood of Jesus. It will never lose its power. And it reaches to the high, yes, mountain mountain and it flows to the lowest valley valley oh the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power it will never lose its power amen you know, one day when I was in the hospital working as a house officer, a man came and this man was dying because he lost a lot of blood, you know. And actually also one of my church members, I remember that experience, and I was looking for blood. This guy was dying. So I decided to go to the blood bank. And there was, there was no blood, so I decided to go to the blood bank myself, you know. And when I got to the blood bank, there was blood everywhere, blood in the fridge, blood fridges, and so many things with blood. And I said, I need this blood. I need this blood. This man is dying. I need blood now. Give me blood. <laughs> and there was no blood. They said, we don't have this type of blood. I was desperate. So when I was convinced that there was really, because I checked myself in the fridge, I checked the types of it. No blood, no blood, no blood, no blood. And this guy was dying. I wanted to take the blood myself, rush there. I was a houseman. Tried to save this person. But just as I was going out, I saw on a table some blood that I hadn't seen. So I went to the blood and I checked. I said, but this, this is the blood. And he said, yeah, it's the blood, but it's expired. It's, it's old blood. It's expired. We can't use it because it has a time when it expires. It loses its goodness. Are you with me? And that's when I understood when we say there is blood, the blood of Jesus. It will never, never lose its power. No matter how much time goes by, the blood of Jesus will never lose its power. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Can you imagine if the blood of Jesus had expired in 1960? Just before you were born. <laughs> hey. Can you imagine if the blood of Jesus had was, was destined to expire 1980. 
1970, 1940. I mean, some of you guys, I tell you. Those of you who were born in the 90s. How many were born in the 90s? Oh, man, you'll be lost. Because the blood of Jesus would have expired in 1980. But are you glad that the blood of Jesus will never lose its power? It will never lose its power. It will never lose its power. It will never, it will not lose its power. It will never lose its power. It will never lose its power. Yes, even if you are born next year, 